Hi, my name is Devi Belongkonda. I am working as a technical marketing engineer focusing on Cisco Software Defined Access. Today, we are going to see how we can connect multiple sites using Cisco SD Access as a transit. First, let's get familiarized ourselves with the terminology. We are going to see what a fabric site is and what does a fabric domain mean and then we will look at what a transit network is and we are going to look at a demo of how we can connect multiple sites using a Cisco SD access as a transit. Let's first look at what exactly is a fabric site. A fabric site is nothing but a logical area with a unique set of fabric nodes such as control plane, border and edge. We may also need wireless LAN controller if wireless capabilities are a requirement in a site. A fabric site may cover a single physical location such as a branch or a campus and it can be spread across multiple locations such as a metro campus. Or it can also be a subset of a location such as a building or an area within a campus like a floor. And let's see what is a fabric domain. Cisco SD Access Fabric Domain is basically a hierarchical representation of fabric sites managed by Cisco DNA Center Controller. And a fabric domain can consist of one or more individual fabric sites connecting via a transit. And this transit is used for inter-site communication. And a fabric domain should be able to scale horizontally by having state-specific information in each of the sites. Let's quickly see what is a transit or a peer network. Transit is analogous to your van. A transit can help us connect multiple fabric sites together. If you look at the picture, we have two different fabric sites which are connected using a transit. There are two types of transit networks right now in Cisco DNA Center 1.3 release and a transit network can be either SD access transit or an IP transit. An SD access transit is used to interconnect sites with a native SD access encapsulation which is basically extending the logic of a fabric site to multiple sites. A transit can also be an IP transit and an IP based transit offers IP connectivity without the native SD access encapsulation and functionality potentially requiring additional VRF and HCT mapping for stitching to together the macro and the micro segmentation needed between the sites. Let's see why we need those transits. IP transit is for customers whose remote branches are connected via traditional WAN or MPLS, where a direct internet access is required and site-to-site -site encryption, traffic engineering and policy-based routing is a requirement. Here, a consistent policy and end-to-end -end segmentation is achieved by some manual configuration. SD Access Transit is required for customers who have multiple sites connected via dark fiber or DWDM links or sites in the same metropolitan area. Here, in this transit, a consistent policy and end-to-end -end segmentation is achieved by few clicks. More information on the transits and Cisco SD Access can be found in SD Access communities and you can reach out to us for any questions regarding the same. Let's quickly look at a demo. Here in this demo topology, we are going to create two fabric sites and connect them together using Cisco SD Access Transit. We are going to use IP Transit to connect headquarters sites to the outside world for the users to have access to the internet and also to the data center and shared services. A remote branch does not have internet connectivity in its location 
and the remote branch has all three fabric rolls on the same box which is called fabric in a box and the remote branch is going to have access to the internet and data center via sd access transit through a site one which is the cisco sd access headquarters site Here, we are in the provision page of the DNA Center homepage. We do not have any transits created, but we have a fabric domain called San Jose Fabric, which has already been created and it has multiple fabric sites in it. So first, we are going to create two transits, which is IP and SD access transit. The IP transit is used for headquarters site and the SD access transit is used to connect the headquarters sites to the remote branches. We are going to create an IP transit and here we use EBGP as the configuration and we use uh, to connect the border to the outside world and we have to give the remote autonomous system number which we are going to use when configuring or automating the BGP configuration from the DNA center. We are also going to create an SD access transit. The main requirement for an SD access transit is a transit control plane node, which holds information about the prefixes in all of the sites. There can be two transit control plane nodes and they can be placed anywhere. In, in this demo topology, the transit control plane node is located in the headquarters site, which is SJC5. We are going to point to SJC5 and we are going to make this device a transit control plane node. And now that we have created the transits, we are going to go into the fabric domain called San Jose Fabric and we are going to enable a brand new site. This is the headquarters site and we have enabled San Jose 5 as the fabric and we can select how many ever VRFs we want to be part of this fabric site. These are the devices which has been assigned to this specific site which was a step which was done before coming to the provisioning tab. We are going to enable SD access on top of the sites. So this is the transit control plane node. I am going to make this a border and a control plane node and I am going to connect this to the outside world. This, the local autonomous system for this guy is 65002, which is going to connect to the other side with an autonomous system number of 65001 and an EBGP configuration is going to be pushed from DNA center. And we have to select a, a pool to help configure the BGP. Because we have the data center and internet connectivity, we need to have this border as an anywhere border. We are going to have an IP transit to this and we are also going to point what external interface is this box connected to to the other device. And you can enable how many ever VRFs that you are going to build your EBGP neighborship with. And this is the same box which is also going to be used to connect to the remote branches. So we are also going to have an SD access transit from the same box. So we are also going to add SD access transit. And because this site has access to the internet, we have to make sure this box is checked. This box helps the other sites which does not have access to the internet, the proper configuration is going to get pushed to the sites so that the sites without the internet access can leverage the sites with internet access.
and I have an access device where my end hosts are connected to and I'm going to make this device as a fabric edge node. Now that I have selected these devices as with specific fabric rules and I am going to apply the changes that I have made. So now I have created a fabric site SJC5 which is ready to go live. Now I am going to connect the remote branch to the same SD access transit so that the remote branch can connect to the headquarters site and have access to both internet and data centers. In this box, I am going to enable all the three fabric roles. The local autonomous system on the box is 65005 and I am only going to use SD access transit. Because this box is going to be connected to the SD access transit, I am going to use this box as an external border because I do not need to import any routes from the outside world. Now I can apply the changes and now I have a remote branch enabled with the fabric which has all these three functionalities on the same box. If you see here, we have created two brand new sites with SD access fabric and the headquarters site of SJC5 has both IP and SD access transit and the SFO11 which is a remote branch is also connected to the SD access transit. Thank you.